Good morning everyone, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, we're going to start piecing the background and the, I guess the foliage or the, the brush that my little bunny is hiding in. So, oh gosh, Bandit is just running them up to the side of the window here. They've just had their breakfast and they're wrestling over a little piece of uh, leaf. So what could possibly go wrong? And all I can see him is doing wheelies outside my window. Fudge has just left the room. He's been meow mowing and saying hello and gone, right, I'm out of here, I'm going to bed. Probably because there's two dogs whipping past the window. But anyway, let's get focused on what we're doing here. So little bunny. Now, let me bring you up to speed. So I stitched the outside like I did in the last video, just doing a split back stitch. Then using those threads that I selected, I very gingerly sketched in, I think I end up only using three, a dark fawn, a light fawn, and a white, and a little bit of black. Very, very, very gently sketched in his shape. I'm not sure if I'll do any more stitching, or I'll leave it as it is. I, I sort of, I don't know, I, the whole aim of the game was to do something similar to this guy who's heavily stitched. But as I did this little guy on such a small scale, I just felt like I could like cloudy him up, like you wouldn't see the definition that I was chasing. So I was a little bit concerned that my stitches were going to overpower him. Does that make sense? So, that's where we're at with this little guy. Then the, the little flowers that I drew in, which were from Susanna's design, I split back stitched them and then I whip stitched them. So if you're not sure what I'm talking about is the split back stitch is where the needle goes back into the previous stitch every time. So it just gets rid of that poked through fabric look that running stitch, um, normal stitch can do. Um, then I went through and wound another thread through it all. So I slid my needle underneath that stitch and then again and again and again, and you get a raised corded look, which I thought um, suited the piece. I needed it to be quite strong because it is a cream, so it's neutral, but it needed to hold its own in this, you know, space is what I'm trying to say. Anyway, now what I've got here is my scrap bucket, another scrap bucket, my traveling scrap bucket, and then off to my side I've got more plain fabrics. So the plan is to have a fiddle around with the perimeter and see what we can piece together. Now um, with this one, I looked for things that were very scrolly and loose to lay over it. Now these are little embellished doilies. So you can see, see that piece there. I'm not sure if I've got anything like that here with me. See that piece there? They're all out of napkins and that. So I sort of want to I don't know if I'll be able to pull it off because I'm just not sure what's in this stash. There's another one through there, another one through there. The other thing I did was I made some little floralettes out of um, calico as well. So that's another three-dimensional option we've got. Um, there are little patches of fabric in there as well just to make it, you know, look a little bit interesting. So, and then lots of medallions, some lace that is very loose and open weave. So we'll see how we go. I think my biggest issue is I don't have much space. So I need to be very careful of what I pick. Now, I have this little snippet. It's the last little bit of lace from the seamstress. That was part of a collar from my grandmother. And it's just been sitting in my needle. Um you know, sitting in with my needles. So I do want to find a home for that. Got some little medallions here that were underneath all of the mess as I pulled it out. And I thought, well, they're a good size. That's to remind me that I can cut one in half. 
It's a little bit ratty, but I thought I'll just leave it there. And I also found this. It was in this box. And I thought, well, I could bring that in easily to Bunny. So I actually thought about putting that on his chest, to be honest. And I thought when we get to the deer and the, um, oh, what are the other ones? What's the other one? Oh, it's gone blank. I don't have the paperwork for the coming months. Having a little bit of this tone might actually prove to be helpful. So that's where I think I'm going to start. Is either we put it in his ear or we put it on his chest. I'm thinking to put it on his chest. Now this is a very loose weave um, product. So once I get my shape... I need to apply glue to the back of it just to hold it in position and then I can stitch it down or couch it into position and I've stitched already the outline so I want to try and sneak it on the inside of all of that got my bin nearby Catch all my scrappy bits. It's just about finding the sweet little shape you need. Just keep trimming, keep trimming. I'm gonna just get this bottom bit right. want it to sit just inside my stitching. Look at that. No use having all that stitching if it's just going to be covered up. So it doesn't matter. There will be stitching covered up. I guess that's the wrong statement to say. That's getting better. Now I just need to bring his chin line down. Tuck that within his chin space. There. That's good. Just gives him that little hint of it. And once that's stitched in, I'll be able then to go back and stitch even closer to it to get a little bit more shading. Oh, that fudgy bee can hear him. It's just given me some messages of why aren't you sitting on the couch so I can sit on your lap. And here he comes. He's kind of, he was frisky this morning. He was quite active. So I'm just going to use some art glitter glue just to reinforce all of those edges so that that little piece doesn't disintegrate anymore. It's a good way of using this type of product, but you do need to reinforce it a little. I know I've got some cream of this, but it's a bigger weave. It would have been lovely to use, but we'll see. Okay, so I'm just going to manoeuvre that little guy out of the way. It needs to just dry. It can sit there till the end. Okay. So that's his tummy. Now, what have we got? Let's start fossicking. It's about looking for interesting pieces, isn't it? Interesting edges. I might just sort of fling everything to one side as I go. I use this so much. See if I can find something else. I'm just sort of separating it into that could be useful. That's got colour in it. I don't think so. No. Bit of tatting. I've got to get down to the little little bits. 
could be useful. Crochet edge. Oh, I need a crochet edge for my piece. Vintage sewing. Oh, not vintage sewing. Um, the seamstress. Like that. Got sidetracked. That would be nice on the bottom of it. Just put that over to one side. Anyway, sorry guys, just got a little bit. Now we're getting down to the, the good bits. A bit of tatting. Another half. Some little ones. It's getting real small. Little itty bitty morsels. Too white. Please don't tell me I've got nothing that's inspiring me. That's a last little piece of lace, too white. Ah, see, this is what I'm looking for. Little bits like that. Okay, feeling better. Thought there must be something in here. Little bits like that. So they're like embossed cottons. This one I'm looking for. That's that overlay fabric look. Let's spin it around. Have another little rummage over here. I haven't been to the bottom of the barrel for ages here. Everything's so large scale. It's about finding bits that are small. Okay, well that wasn't very fruitful, was it? I did find that. I did find that. Okay. Let's get a bit of what's on that doily. Nothing. Some interesting side pieces. Look, it's a hang of a mess. A bit of tatting. That's that. Oh, that's a bit of wool. I thought maybe if I did decide to show his tail, I could do something with this batting, this cotton batting. That's color code, we don't want that. That there could be used. I like that. Just to bring in a little bit of, I don't know. <laughs> can't use my words. I haven't had a coffee yet this morning. Yesterday when I was filming, I had the coffee and then I had this coughing attack and oh, I was like, oh my goodness. I had to stop the video a few times and then the video was just shocking. So I ended up just giving up on the whole idea and I'd only got, you know, five minutes into it and deleted it. And I just felt like the coffee wasn't helping me at all. I don't know what I'm doing here. I think I'm just popping in a little bit of texture. There was um, <clears throat> there was some fabric. Okay, hang on. Hold your horses. <clears throat> when we were doing the first video, I was using this as I was chatting away, and I spotted that in it so i thought i wouldn't mind getting a little bit of this fabric in here but we'll have to see because there's no use doing it if i'm just going to cover it with um you know lace and that i don't think there's much in here until i get to flowers because this little guy is 
is good for additional flowers. But we're not at that stage. We've got to get our, there's a bit of interesting fabric. We've got to get our base. Nope. Now this container, oh, look at this. Gosh, <laughs> random. I'm still um, yet to start my scarf. And something like that could be interesting, couldn't it? Give me tassels at the end of it. I might just chuck that at the back of the table. <laughs> I've got a pile of fabrics. Oh, hello. I've got a pile of fabrics at the back of the table there that are... Um, <laughs> potential ideas for making my scarf. As you can imagine, I'm filming this in February and I'm still working on my jacket and mulling the idea of this scarf around. I really like this. This here gives me foliage. This could be a good overlay once we get something down for the background. Just rough cut it out for now. Guess it could even go right off the page, hey? Cut it right up here. All right. So I've got three feature elements so far, which is good. Mm, another bottom that could be good for a scarf. Chuck that down the end of the table. Okay, now we're talking, getting into the lace and medallions and things that can come from lace. But they're so blooming big. Look at the size of that. That's not going to work. Ah, this is what I'm looking for. This type of stuff. That's used on that one example that I showed you, the big rabbit. It's not bad, but it's so big. Gosh, I wouldn't have thought that finding small, dainty morsels. That's good. It's very thick. Would be the issue. Oh, hello. Dainty. It's got potential. It's good when you get to the bottom of the the bucket because you haven't been in that bucket for a while. This one's been sitting behind me on the desk. Okay, okay. Right. Did we achieve anything there? I think we got a few little bits. I'm not convinced yet. Let's have a little rummage through this guy. Maybe I've got to get some more backgrounds down. What else have we got in here? do like how big do you think this piece is girl all right how are we going to do that i had that piece sitting up there on the corner which i sort of sort of like i think i need to oh, it's so white mm. i don't mind white being a highlight but white being predominant eh not sure 
What's in this bucket? I don't think I want to go anywhere near this because it's colour. You never know. There could be something. No. What's that? That's something. See, it pays to look, doesn't it? Things get mixed up. Ah, the little angel wings that Susanna sent me. This bucket was on my desk up at Barham. So this is a lot of Easter um, projects there. Okay. I think, I, what do I think? What am I thinking? I don't know what I'm thinking. I'm thinking I like that. I just need to start laying things down and fiddling with things, but I don't know. I feel a little bit like I just don't have the right ingredients. Why is that? I think it's because the colour of them all, guys. Maybe I should go and tea dye a few things. See, that's better. It's not as polarisingly white. I don't know. I don't know. Becomes banded at high speed. I know the neighbours getting their windows cleaned across the road, and I thought I heard. I thought I heard. Um, look, I'm just going to turn the camera. Hopefully, I can. Look at Bandit standing there. There's Pippa. Bandit, what you doing? I'll move the chair so you can see them. I've got sidetracked. There they are. Move the chair. Hey, Bandit. Hey, Peppa. Bandit. No, they're off. What you doing? Oh, he's gone to get his toy. See the blue toy? Oh, my goodness, I tell you. He's a doofus. All right. Sidetracked. Anyway, was there a squirrel out there that I suddenly took off and looked at? Let's get back to where this. This is more the colour I want, I think. Like, I don't mind a little bit of white, but I feel like it needs to be... Hmm. Where's some medallions? Like, come on, let's get some circle -y things. There were some over here. I do have them all pre-cut in a container, but this one I took the edge off of it and it went on my jacket. I know it's white, but maybe just a little bit of white. Start laying down. That was an effort, wasn't it? <laughs> Goodness me, this one here has got medallions in it. Seriously needs to be trimmed up too. See, it's white as well. What a struggle. I've already rummaged through all this. See, they're all too open. Hmm, okay. Like, they're all possibilities, but, but, but nothing's perfect, guys. Nothing. Let's go further afoot. Another container of lace. Let's see what we can find. All right. Look straight into the white. They're all at the back there. There's cream. Stay in there. That's a good little piece, that one.
This it's a bit thinner and finer and off-white. Oh, finally. Oh, finally we're getting something laid down. Oh my goodness, talk about struggle. Oh, now this is better. That's better. It's a mix of the two colours. This come off of a napkin. Fairly new, not antique. I think the Howard Drapery is where I picked this up for those Southeast Queensland girls. You'll know where I mean. The little country town of Howard has a real old fashioned drapery. Lots of fabric and it's just recently been sold to a, a young local family. And from what I hear, they're doing good things. But it was owned by the same family for oh, many, many years. And unfortunately, the old folk have passed away. And now the estate has sold the business. And it sells everything. It's like what you imagine when you were back in the 70s, even the 60s, the 50s, you would go into a fabric slash everything store. Like you could buy a pair of shoes, you could buy a nice hat, your sleepwear. That's the right way for that. Oh yeah, I like that. Yeah, that can sneak onto his face. Remember I didn't stitch there? That can sneak onto his face. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. I was starting to get a bit bit concerned that I wouldn't be able to put something together here, guys. Maybe we skirt around the perimeter with textured fabrics. And then from there, we sneak in with the laces. Just a thought. Gosh, I can't throw anything away. Like it's just this little morsel, but goodness sakes. It's funny, isn't it? And then it's just about little things, then start getting layered in. You can fiddle with this type of work for hours. Any other really pretty little soft, creamy bits? It's very bold. That's pretty. That's got potential. potential of coming in from a bottom edge. Where's my old piece of lace? We need to find a home for that before it is forgotten and lost. Yep, here we go. I need something to scoot along that bottom. I don't know why I cut that there. Could have cut it higher on that one side. Get rid of that seam because it'll be right where I need to join. Don't mind the feet being covered. That was always a distinct possibility. I stitched them in anyway, but I did feel like I could potentially come up there and lose the feet but I was okay with that like it might even come right up there remember I drew a line through there is where he could potentially lose a foot look I'm going to put this morsel in get rid of the blue don't need the blue sneak that into there all right oh, finally how does that work? It's too big. Oh, I don't mind it there, but. So where does that leave things like this? Nowhere. Just 
We don't have a lot of space, do we? Hmm. Look at that. Surely we can get this in. Let's fussy cut her out some more. Make her a little bit more dainty. Before I start the next animals, I'm going to have to go digging for more of these types of um, embossed lace. Uh, they're linen doilies, tablecloths, but they have this embossed little element to them. I need some more of this. Actually, you guys will be watching this and I'll be down at Ballarat with Susanna running amok. So note to self, whilst exploring the nooks and crannies of all of the antique outlets and op shops and goodness knows where that girl's going to be dragging me, I could do with some more of these types of elements to add to my stash. They're so cute when they're fussy cut out. And get right back to that nice, they're machine done like they're part of sewing machines that do these things. Uh, mass production. It was about when sewing machines started having the ability to be programmed and they could put patterns into them and away they went en masse and then out they cut these tablecloths and napkins and we certainly don't see them much now in the stores do we? The whole embroidered delicate Like, I do like that, but it's so big. Where are you going to go? Getting the shape, it's got this curve about it. I like it there. Yeah, that's where it's going to go. It's going to cradle the other side. Okay, so that is too big. So we're gonna pop that to one side. This little guy is a good soft little element. I think he could be snuck in there to start getting a very lacy little edge to it all. I don't mind that covering Bunny's face because he's behind the bushes looking out. So it's all about giving him a little spot. This piece here, I just don't think we've got the room for it. What I might do is some of these elements I know are in the category of what we need so I might just put them to one side in a little container so when we get to the other months, I don't have to uh, hunt out, you know, hunt through everything again to that degree, I think. side it's just too wide it's encroaching on the little tulip so it's a smidgen off it's probably too tall but that's better but it would do the trick in one swoop I think I can find better ones of those that aren't so 
broken down. I need something swishing around this corner. Maybe that. I'm trying to cut it so I can keep that little diamond there. Because that is just a cute little when we get down to the tiny itty bitty embellishing pieces, little things like that. I'm gonna cut a finger the way I'm going here. Like that, I know it's tiny, but being that it's a square and a diamond, often they're really cool, just as to change the shape of things. Not that I like it where I just put it, but yeah, I think that can sneak up that side that comes in there. I don't know about that piece. I don't think that's doing anything there design wise. I think that just looks like a scrap sitting on the side. Let's get this guy back into position. We're getting there. Oh, sometimes the smaller pieces are the hardest, you know. It just, it's quite interesting, isn't it? You think, yeah, you've got a, quite an easy little piece to put together. That little scrappy bit can sit there. That's an interesting little piece. No use trimming it because I'll probably put something on this corner. Like what? I think I need a medallion out of my crocheted. Unless I find something. Don't need that bit at the top, but that coming through there could work. Let's cover his ears a bit, but it could stand at the top of the box. Like having lace peeking out the top of the piece. I don't mind that. Yep, need something here. We need a medallion. Have I got any here that are cream? Or have I got to jump up and grab my tray? They're all very white. I've already got the white one there. All right, let me grab my tray. Hold the, hold the phone, guys. Okay. Faithful tray of goodie bits. Do some darker tones just to break up. Yeah, that's better. These are good, they're real chunky and textured. Maybe something like that could sneak into this corner. Seems a shame to cut it to a degree, but I like how we got this shape here. Yeah, I do. She's going to do it. She is going to do it because you never know the shape that is left. That might work somewhere else. I'm just going to trim it up a little bit. Get a more defined point. 
And sometimes things like that can just provide that little bit of texture elsewhere. Yep. I like that. I like that. It just needs to be positioned when I stitch it down that we don't cover his eye. Just push things back just a little bit just so that he's not completely immersed. Now I feel like I need something through here. I know we've got this little guy. I'm going to turn that up there and then that there. Needs something there. This is where this container may give me something. Some of these, they're too similar to that other one. Very white. Here we go. It's too big. What if I put that guy? Oops. What if I put that fellow up? Ah, oh, come on. Oh gosh, you know what's going to happen the moment I move all this. This is going to be quite. What a challenge. Okay, we've got that guy up there. Put him over there. This guy then comes in over the top. That guy sat in there. Yep, now I like it. It's more of an angle. Right, so now we've got three different colours there. So the eye has half a chance of seeing something when looking at it so let's now look if that sits there this is like a little peacock tail he's going to sit there ever so delicately we've got a couple morsels there now this guy maybe we invert him and stitch him in there so he looks like he's still part of that piece and then that drifts across the whole thing. How are we going? That little guy I think is a lost cause. He's not really finding a home. I feel like there's just something, something along there. And I don't think it's in there. Whatever this thing may be, maybe it's just a piece of lace. If I got any, hmm. Something for the sewing room. Can we slip that in? Why not? Why not have a reference to the sewing room? <laughs> we are. There you go. And I don't mind that that is free there. It just gives a little bit of air. Now, where's our little chest? Does he still have the little chest? I don't know if I like it. Well, isn't that interesting? Yeah, I'm not convinced I like that. Wow. It's like it overpowers him, doesn't it? When there was no lace around... That looked really cool. Now that all of this is in position, it just doesn't quite look, quite look right. I don't know if I need that little patch. Feels like it's a square shape coming in on a soft edge. I think that's. There we go. Yeah, 
There we go. There we go. Oh, gosh. I didn't think that was going to come together at one point. I was thinking, where's all my bits? Why are there no bits? There's always bits. You just got to look for them. That little bit there, I think, could be cut out. So we can now look at really tiny little elements. What I'll need to do is I will take a photo of this because I'm going to actually need to deconstruct it to actually stitch it because I've got to get that the border in behind. So there you go. Whew, we've done it. Oh, 45 minutes of my life has just gone into this. Goodness sakes. Slow, all right. Let me zoom in, guys. There you go. Yeah. Hello, little bunny. What are you doing hiding in behind all of that? You're just watching. Yeah, lovey. Love, love, lovey. Okay, guys. Oh, my goodness. I tell you, I feel exhausted. I'm definitely going to need a coffee after this. What I'll do now is um, I will stop the video. I'll take a photo. So I haven't even played with those yet. They're all those little details that you can lay in on things. But anyway... Um, I'll take a photo of it, then I'm going to need to deconstruct it, and um, see how I didn't even put any of this in, a bit of furry stuff, not furry stuff, what do they call it, cheesecloth, gosh, you can do so much, all right, enough, very happy with that, my little lacy bunny, so this little Ginger, um, gingerbread, I've got gingerbread on my brain for some reason. Um, this little bag that we're making with one little critter per side, it's a Japanese rice bag that, you know, I use to hold morsels, is going to be very lacy and have these little critters jumping out. My camera's wobbling. I must have moved it and it's too close to the table and I'm bumping the table. So I do apologise. Okay, well, I'm going to pause the video toddle off, have a little stitch, and I'll um, be back. Okay, guys, won't be long. Hello, everyone. I'm back, and my little rabbit is finished. I have stitched down all of the little elements. They are not going anywhere, and I just love Lovey. He's really, really cute. I think this is going to make the most adorable little caddy based on the good old Japanese rice bag. So there's one side, let me zoom up a little bit for you. So imagine that on the side and then all the other critters. So we've got ourselves a nice color palette. Oh, love it, really, really good. I did alter a couple little things. This piece of fabric coming through here, I brought it to the front. So that peacock shaped piece is half covered by it where it was sitting out in the open. Um, there was something else I did too, and I thought I better mention that because it sort of made a bit of a difference. I think it was this piece of lace. I ended up bringing that one over it and that one over it, which pushed it back a bit. I thought that that worked. Sure, there was something else. Oh, I actually had this on upside down. You may have spotted it and was probably yelling at the screen, but I did pick up on it and I'd actually started stitching it and I'm thinking, why are all these fluffy bits on the front? Then I clicked that that's where the thread had finished and restarted with the sewing machine when the big sewing machines would have created this piece. I'm like, oh no, oh no. So I ended up unpicking a little bit of it, flipping it over. So I caught that in time. Yeah, you've got, to, you've got to be a bit wary of lace. It can be tricky to pick the front and back. And then sometimes the front is not as good as the back. You might find that the piece is not as shiny if you were to actually apply it to your work upside down. So sometimes I've done that. I've actually left it upside down. So, and this tiny little morsel, the last, last little morsel of that beautiful lace has found a home. So it's not rattling around in this mess anymore. So very, very pleased with it. So March, tick. 
it's only two videos so yeah i guess that leaves opportunities for other adventures so um i just wanted to mention i'm filming this in february because march is very busy and i will be the time you're watching this video in the middle of the retreat that Susanna from Vintage Blend Studios is hosting and gallivanting around the countryside. I'm with her for 10 days, so it's just going to be the best adventure. So for me, it's actually January. And while I was sitting there today stitching this, um, having a lovely time stitching away, the mailman came and some happy mail came in the mail. Now, I don't usually mention happy mail because i don't get a lot because i don't really want to encourage it but this lovely lovely lady reached out to me because i'd made a comment about running out of tatty so susanna's been on the hunt i've since found a few pieces that i've forgotten i had um and then stephanie reached out to me and said i have some tatting i would love to send your way so the letterbox gets a parcel I've opened it up, had a little look, and I thought I just have to show you because there's some other things in this pile that Stephanie, I hope you're not embarrassed by me doing this. We just have to show everyone because they are a little bit special. So Stephanie sent me a little combination of items, some threads, and this is the tatting, some beautiful little morsels, and some of them have come from her friends. Just, oh. Just yummy little treasured bits. And that's all we really need. Like pieces like this potentially could last me ages when you start, you know, nibbling little pieces out of them. And look at that. There's just some that really stand out to me. That was one of them. They're just, and even like little, little bits. This one here, actually, when I went through the parcel, I was still sitting on the lounge. And I hopped up to get a glass of water, come back into the room. And this, there was one lying on the carpet. Where is it? Wasn't this one? Oh, don't tell me it's already gone into the abyss that is my table. It might turn out. I think it was a little piece cut from this. And it's the sweetest. There it is. This was lying. I've got um, charcoal carpet. And that was lying in the center of my room. And oh, I just looked at it and thought, wow, see how that is just the cutest little morsel. So it's not from that piece. Isn't it just pretty? Just gorgeous. These little elements are just so, so special. So I really feel very blessed and restocked on my tatting. So thank you, Stephanie, and to your friends, because the little note said tatting from friends, so lovely. And then I'm still getting to the good stuff. Look, there's a little piece there. Oh, look at those threads. A girl can always use threads. And I love how, Stephanie, you've attached them into little clusters. That's really good, because when they go into this abyss, if you, gosh, guys, if you could see to the side of me, it's just a, um, a crew a white mind filled of fabrics and yumminess. It's good when it's attached because, you know, it just reminds me of where it's come from. I won't always remember, but it just makes it a bit special. Look at this motif here. And there's like a bit of padding in there. Like just, just gorgeous some trim and I think this was a table runner of her mum's and um, a friend the gold trim so thank you to Stephanie and friends that have contributed to this little package of goodies look at this wasn't that unusual and then it doesn't stop there she has put together some fussy cut flowers like oh, I can never have enough fussy cut flowers and little morsels and she's put a little stitch in them so they're going straight into my random fabric basket of goodies straight in there ready to go some little pansies some little lacy bits and this this is one of the special things now the little note says this was a doily it was cut from a doily that I made when I was 10 
and next month I will be 79. So I hope you don't mind, Stephanie. I just let the cat out of the bag of your age, but this it, it all puts it into perspective. And the edging on that doily that the little 10 year old Stephanie made, look at the lily, this edging, her friend's grandmother crocheted the edging. So if Stephanie was 10 and the grandmother did the edging, wow, what a gorgeous little morsel. And because she stitched them together, like, oh, it's just little things like that. Oh, I don't know. Maybe I'm just a, a set old, what do they call it when you're an old sentimental soul? Oh, I tell you. Now, this is what I wanted to show you. So there's three items here, and Stephanie's put a little note on each one, which just makes it really, really good. This is raw silk from a friend's, friend's fabric, 60 years, wedding dress old. Look at this. 60-year-old raw silk wedding dress. I feel very privileged to have a piece. And I love how you stitched it together because it's together. Yeah, lovely. Hold it. It gets even better. Pure silk from my GP doctor. So in Australia, GP is general practice. So it's the first point of contact in the medical world. I don't know if it's the same for you guys elsewhere, but we call them general practitioner doctors, um, GP. So the GP... Um, has given Stephanie this. It's over a hundred years old. Seriously, are you sitting down? Are you looking like put your needles down, girls, and have a look at this? It is so soft and so delicate and so beautiful. Now, I mentioned that I am in um, February filming for March hence the rabbit video that I'm working out look at the sun's coming in it's in the afternoon um, so I'm starting to mull around the scarf now you guys are probably already watching the scarf video so this will be a bit odd when you watch this video because you'll be like oh yeah we've been seeing the scarf I'm thinking seriously about how I can incorporate this into my scarf my slow stitch scarf so stay tuned I think it'll happen, but you never know. Like, it's just a random idea at the moment. But yeah, this this is just beautiful. And then down here, this one, pure silk from my mother's shawl. It's just, just beautiful. Like these threads. It's just so pretty. Look at it shining in the sun. Oh, very, very special. So look, I um, just had to mention it. I've sent Stephanie a message thanking her profusely for taking the time to send me these gorgeous, gorgeous little pieces of history and that I've told everyone about it on the end of the bunny video. So um, yeah, there you go. So thank you guys. Um, I do appreciate this, Stephanie. It's treasures, tre treasures. You cannot, cannot know how much that means to me. All right, guys, look after yourselves. Look, the sun's coming in. Did you see that? It's how quickly the sun sets. I tell you, it's time to, I see I'm moving further and further into the shade. <laughs> I'm going to say goodbye. It's time to get dinner ready and, you know, do some chores because I've been stitching bunny all day and looking at my treasures. Anyway, time to clean up, tidy up. Have a good night, guys. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye.